Okay, welcome back to Yacht Brain. You're wondering, how can I continue? Jen already won, right? Well, here's the thing. One of the nicest things about this game is it has a built-in difficulty level because this is a really tough game to get your head around. There's so much to think about, so many moving, literally moving parts with special abilities and all that, and um, your, your plans could change on a dime. And clearly, in the run-through I just did, I was representing me, the investigators, being a rank novice, really terrible player, and Jen, who played very smartly, actually being an experienced player who's played well. The game caters for that. As you remember, at the beginning of the game, the uh, opera singer lady was right here. This is a variable difficulty handicap thing, where if, you are, if, if somebody is not very good at the game, playing as somebody who is, you can move her. So in this case, the investigators, me, are not very good players. So instead of starting here in the middle, I could have started over to the left, and that would have given me more time. So let's say, just for the purposes of being able to do some extended play, the investigator player was an idiot, which I was, and so we knew that going in, and we agreed to the handicap. The investigator was going to get all the benefit, all the advantages in the world, because Jen, the Phantom, was an experienced player. And now that means, since I had one, two, three more, that really, we're at one, two, three. We're at DEF CON three. We're still very, very close. You know, Jen is still completely, you know, wiping the floor with me. But I've got at least one more turn now to turn this around and maybe, because still, you know, th this is not good. But on the flip side, there are only three suspects left. So, let's see what we can do. So, at, at the end of that turn, it wasn't quite over. The fat lady has not sung yet as she ran out the room, out the, out the door. So, let's flip it. And now, we're going to reveal the other four. And we'll see, this is probably the turn that will make her break um, the novice. And the phantom gets to play first, then I play twice, and the phantom plays once. Okay, so, the gray guy, the black girl, the pink girl, and the white guy um, let's see. Those are the four that can move. Okie doke. Who is Jen now? What Jen wants to do is, if she can, she wants to keep these three suspects all without alibis, all by themselves in dark rooms or whatever, because then that means she'll win. She'll push it over the edge. So that's what she wants to do. How is she going to do that? All right, moving the white guy. Well, let's see. First of all, neither, let's see. first of all, which of the uh, suspects can we actually directly control? Only the, only the understudy, the, the Persian the spy guy and the rich, um, they're not available. So the only way these two guys are going to move is if um, they are manipulated by somebody else. And, and the two manipulators are here on the board. Although, here's the problem, the white guy, see the white guy, he could move in here and shout at him and, sh and shove him out, but he can't because of this lock. Very bad. See, again, I have played epically poorly. Now, Jen knows as the Phantom, probably the best bet I have, by far, is the, is the Singing Lady. So Jen's going to use that. Because this, is a, this would be, because if I had the singing, the, the singing Lady, I could move her up here, make her sing, draw this, and now two of the suspects are together. And one of them is separated, and there's a chance I could win. But Jen wants to keep them all separated. So she is going to have the singing lady, instead of moving up there where it would help me, she's going to have the singing lady move over here. And then she's going to sing, and what the heck. She doesn't have to. Singing is optional. She's going to sing and move both of these characters here. Um, and so all three, all three characters. Oh, in fact, this is even doubly good because the singing lady is in the dark room. So um, everything's cool. Oh. No, no, no. Actually, she's going to move there, and then she's not going to sing. She wants her to be completely alone. Moving guys over there, that would actually help me, because then, if the darkness goes away, she, does, she has an alibi. Jen doesn't want. Jen wants everybody to be a suspect, um, so she can up her chance to scare the crap out of her. So, Jen moved. Ah, that's interesting. So, if Jen moved here and didn't sing, on my turn, I'll be able to move this guy, uh, move him in here, and then I'll be able to move the darkness... Interesting. And so, now, she has an alibi, and these two characters don't. And then what else could I do? Oh, and then, oh! And then I could move, oh, yes, very nice, okay. Well, you know what, let's say maybe Jen made a bad move for a change. Jen did that, she thought she was brilliant, but then it's my turn, and she didn't see what I saw. I was smarter than I thought. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna move the electrician into here, and now, before or after, I, there's no parentheses, I have to change the darkness thing. The darkness was in there, 
And I'm gonna move it here. No, I, um, okay, I just want this out of the way. I just don't want this to be in play. I, I just don't want this to affect the outcome at all. I'll move it over here just to get it out of the way. All right. And so now this guy's by himself. He could be the phantom. This guy or, or this girl has an alibi and this guy's by himself. So that was my first move. And then my second move was I will move Miss Pink using her secret powers. Doodly 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 and ta-da, she is now, so now two of the three characters have an alibi. And one of them doesn't. So this is a long shot. Okay, and now Jen, the phantom player, she gets to go again. Uh, here's Mr. Shouty McShouterson. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, no! Oh, see, because Shouty McShouterson can move in here and can split these two characters up and it would undo my work. Let's stop and think about this for a second longer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I thought I was so smart. See, this, this game just really does your head in. All right, so let's see. I had these three characters, right? No, no. Shen had moved in. Okay. So I needed to move two characters. And I want these characters to be together. Oh, my gosh. Ah, I, you know, I, I was afraid doing this run-through because it, it requires so much thinking. Um, but let's see. Now, he's off by himself. There's not much I can do to affect him. Um, she's moved in here. She didn't sing, so she's by herself. She's in the dark. All three things. Let's see, I definitely will move Pink Girl. That's my first move. I'm moving Pink Girl up here so this guy has an alibi. So that's good. Now, I could move Shouty Guy. Actually, yes, that's what I should have done. I will move Shouty Guy. No. Yes, no. Oh, my gosh. I can move Shouty Guy down there. She'll still be by herself. She'll be in the dark. He'll be by himself. Oh, shouty guy, I hate you. Actually, I, I don't think I have a better move. Because again, if I, I can move shouty guy here. Ah, no, that's it. That's perfect. That's what I'm doing. So my first move was pink girl. Then my second move is shouty guy. He's coming in here. And now remember, it's optional. He doesn't have to shout. So I am not going to have him shout. He's just going to move in and say, hey, how's it going? You hear there's a murderer and or the, the phantom and blah, blah, blah. And she's really quite surprised. Oh, really? I didn't know you were such a pleasant fellow. And you know, they have a nice chat. He doesn't shout for a change. Even though, maybe it's because they're in the dark. You know, there's no, it's totally dark and they're feeling around and hey, can you, you know, and so he, did, he felt he didn't need to shout for a change. Okay, and now, this is an interesting thing. I have left the electrician for Jen. Now, J the electrician must, the electrician is required to move the darkness. And he, ha he has to move himself, and then he has to move. So, here's the thing. Jen is going to have to move this darkness out of here, thereby putting them together and on the same team. So what's he going to do? First of all, the guy has to move. He can either go here or here. I guess he will go here. What the heck? He'll go here, too. But now, the darkness comes out. Now, she is going to be protected. Currently, two of the three... Yeah, Jen's going to put the darkness in here. All right, there we go. And so suddenly now, while there was an alibi before, now it's in the darkness, so this guy could still be the phantom. Okay, so that's it. We're all done with the movement. And now let's see what happens. Jen, has the phantom struck? And Jen says, yes, the phantom has struck. Ha, 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 ha. And you know, uh, laughs maniacally. Okay, now the phantom has struck. That means, what's your name? Oh, I'm out of here. So very, very close. And now let's look at what we know. The phantom is struck. That means it, the phantom could not be her because she has an alibi. She's with people. So there's another innocent person. But the phantom could be him because he's down here all by himself. Or the phantom could be him because he's standing here in a darkened room. So he could have acted. So that means there are still two suspects. And boom, boom. Once again, the phantom player has won. I cannot state just how emphatically how in that first turn, when I played so epically poorly that I let that eight jump up, that was gonna be a hard thing to come back from. But um, this game is a duel. And so again, even with the handicap, I lost. But I got it down to only two suspects. And if you could go one more turn, I could probably figure it out. And again, if, you know, think it back to the beginning. If I had just made that different, if, well, I forget what it was now, but I think, yeah, I should have moved the darkness guy because I would have at least eliminated two people. And if I had just had, and that first turn, if I had only eliminated two suspects by now, I would have won it. 
I, you know, I, I would have, because there was only two suspects left, I, I would have had the time. Because there would have been two more turns on the clock if I'd eliminated two in that first turn. So, it was just because I made that epic blown head blunder, because I didn't think about it, that I lost this game. But anyway, there was a full handicapped version. And it was still very close. One more turn, and I could have won it. And I was a novice dumb player, uh, but that's because I had a very nice handicap. So anyway, there you go, folks. That was an extended, kind of cheatsy, extended version of Phantom of the Opera. You can hit the button now for final thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.